Well, this is Jerry Mitchell, and we are back from our episode of the Libertarian Censor Podcast, going over all the posts on the Libertarian Censor subreddit. Let's get right into it. So first we have that Tim Wolves falsely believes that free speech guarantee doesn't include what he considers to be misinformation or hate speech will bother almost no damn supporters, since the vast majority of them want the state to be able to be empowered to be censored dissent. And that's from Glenn Greenwald on Twitter, it's linked to a 7 second MSNBC clip from uh, uh, t- Minnesota Governor Tim Walls, Tim Har- uh, Clement Kamala Harris's running mate. And yeah, I said, the future definitely doesn't look too bright from a free speech perspective. You know, increasingly, those in positions of power are saying, oh, we need to censor what, we deem, what the government deems to be misinformation or hate speech. And I don't think that's very libertarian, you know. I think if you want to, if you want to, Call out other people for saying misinformation or hate speech you should be able to, but I think you should be winning debates for words, not with censorship. And the, the and especially the Democratic Party right now, it seems, is very open about how it wants to censor uh, anything it deems to be misinformation or hate speech as a means to censor dissent. And that's my thoughts on that issue. Then we have works every time. And that's from Chad Muffin. That's a meme. Cop. Anything the car in the car I should know about me? Not just, just not just stuff you shouldn't know about. And then the cops is cool. Have a good day. And yeah, that sounds like a libertarian police officer for you. You know, let everyone be keep themselves. You know, if they would have something illegal in the car, you know, you know that's on you. You know, you can keep whatever you have illegal in your car. You know, that's on that's your business. You know, you 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 keep your affairs, and I'll keep my affairs. And that's the libertarian position, I would say. You know, I don't, I'm, I don't want to tell you, I don't want, I don't want to examine what you have in your car because, you know, you, I don't want you to examine what you have in my, what, what I have in my car either. And that's my thoughts on that issue. Then we have Court Blocks Net Neutrality says ISPs are likely to win case against FCC from Lemon Limelight. And they said, from Ars Technica, Court Blocks Net Neutrality says ISPs are likely to win case against FCC. FCC added, the Federal Communications Commission hopes of enforcing net neutrality rules was dealt a major setback last week. A panel of appeals court judges blocked the regulations on Thursday and a ruling that said broadband providers are likely to win the case on the merits. The Sixth Circuit panel found that broadband providers aren't likely to succeed on the merits because the final rule and plot indicates a major question and the commission has failed to satisfy the high bar for imposing such regulations. Net neutrality, the judges wrote, is likely a major question requiring clear Congress congressional authorization and the Communications Act likely does not plainly authorize the commission to resolve the single question. Nor where does Congress clearly grant the commission the discretion to classify broadband providers as common carriers. To the contrary, Congress specifically empowered the Commission to define certain categories of communication services and never did so with respect to broadband providers specifically or the internet more generally. And they added, once again, the courts rightfully recognized the agencies cannot just assume sweeping powers of a clear ma- mandate from the Democratic branch of government. And keep in mind that the hysterics around that neutrality mostly entirely fizzled out. Despite the change in rules over the years, the internet managed to avoid its apocalypse. CNN once proclaimed the end of the internet as we know it. In fact, since 2017's repeal, access increased and prices fell. Some stats from a Wall Street Journal editorial. Investment and access to high-speed internet surged. By the end of 2019, 94% of Americans had access to high-speed internet fix and mobile broadband, up from 77% in 2015. In 2022, broadband builders laid more than 400,000 root miles of fiber, more than 50% more than in 2016. Prices fell for more competition. A study by Casey Mulligan and Phil Kirpin for the Committee to Unleash Prosperity found that from September 2017 to September 2023, the price index for wired internet services fell 11% compared to the overall part consumer price index. The CPI for wireless fell 21% in real terms. The biggest winners from the price decline were low-income households, which paid a larger, higher share of their earnings on broadband. And then they closed with, if activists want neutrality, that they should ask Congress to act. But for the sake of consumers in progress, I hope they don't. And I agree with that. You know, ultimately... You know, I, I think if companies want, to, if if, they, if people want net neutrality, you know, I think they should be able to implement. It. But that being said, I don't think it really matters too much. You know, it was the it was the you know uh, current thing back in 2017, but now people have moved on to other things, and that's my thoughts on that issue. Then we have are all libertarian subs, including this one, just Democrats who like guns from who is Dizzle. And they said, I've seen so many posts and comments that the last few months on all of these libertarian subs, virtually no libertarians. If you believed in socialized medicine, free college tuition, UBI, censorship of speech, mask mandates, affirmative action, etc., etc., you are not a libertarian, sorry. It's come to the point that I don't even know, even know what the fuck to call myself. I've been a libertarian for over a decade, and the party seems to have become even more liberal, not classical liberal, than the Democrats. What, what the fuck is happening? And I said in response, you get used to it, you can always join me in breaking up the circle jerk. 
Then we have Harris running mate Tim Governor running mate Governor Tim Walls owns no stocks, bonds, real estate, or real estate disclosure shows from CNBC.com by Fro away one four six two two five. And yeah, you know that just goes to show you how he's just been drifting off the public sector for years. And that's just like most politicians; they're just career politicians. They don't need to have stocks, bonds, real estate. They can just drift off um, the public. And that's my thoughts on that issue. Then we have got a license for that video from Chad Muffin. That's a clip from uh, the Sky News in the UK. You care, and it was one guy saying like, "Oh, you know, you should have a." We need, to, we need to have patrol of social media, and you know, increasingly in the UK they're just fine arresting people for what comments or videos they make on, on social media. I don't think that's very libertarian, I think that goes against free speech. But increasingly I think free speech is a thing of the past, especially with Tim Walls saying like, oh, it doesn't really matter, it, we need to, we need to, uh, fr misinformation and hate speech are not free speech. And that's my thoughts on that issue. Then we have RFK Jr. from John Oliver on YouTube, and I posted that, and I said, I'm not voting for RFK Jr., but I really can't stand hit pieces against third party candidates, especially from John Oliver, the guy who average writer gets all his marching orders and talking points from. Ask yourself if he would ever do something like this for Kamala Harris. And I asked that I'm sure he would do a hit piece for the Libertarian Party candidate if he was polling well enough. I know because he's done so in the past. He linked to his piece on third party cancer in 2016 when he went after Gary Johnson. And that just goes to show you that, you know, stuff like John Oliver, you know, he's pretty much the DNC equivalent of Fox News. Uh, he'll criticize anything he wants except the Democratic Party. And that's my thoughts on that issue. You know, he's not holding the Democrats to the same standard he does everyone else. You look up John Oliver, Hillary Clinton, and John Oliver, Joe Biden on YouTube and compare the results to John Oliver, Donald Trump. And that's, that's my thoughts there. Then we have folksy uh, VP picks should read some SCOTUS cases like U.S. versus Alvarez 2012, Brandon Burgers v. Ohio 1969, and Brad versus St. Paul 1992. And that was the clip I talked about earlier of Tim Wall saying, oh, no, no, ex uh, uh, First Amendment doesn't apply to hate speech or misinformation. And he said, and, and they added, that was from Chad Buffett, by the way, and then he, they added exceptions to First Amendment protection. One, defamation, false statements that harm someone's reputation, libel, for and slander, spoken, can be subject to civil lawsuits. Public figures must also act, act, prove actual malice that the false statement was made knowingly or with reckless disregard for the truth. Truth, fraud, speech that invokes, no, involves knowingly making false statements to deceive others for financial personal gain, not protected. Free incitement, assassination, Brandenburg v. Ohio, 1969, speech that incites implement lawless action or violence is not protected even if it contains false information for false advertising commercial speech, such as advertising is less protected than false misleading statements, and advertising can lead to legal consequences under consumer protection laws. You are allowed to tell the world you hate something and share news and goodwill. And I would agree with that, you know, ultimately I think out all speech is free speech, but you know, the, the First Amendment does have a few exceptions right from Supreme Court cases, but hate speech and misinformation are not among them, so Tim Wall should, should, should learn that, or, uh, or, uh, or, you know, go, 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 just, just hit the road, I guess. And that's my thoughts on that issue. issue. Then we have Olympic Games official has accreditation rogues for white and supremacy hand gesture for Telegraph by Yahoo News. And I posted that and I said, I remember when the white supremacy hand gesture was the Roman salute rather than the OK sign. Is the middle finger going to the next one? And then I also added, you know, that's pretty much, you know, I was thinking on long lines of, you know, ADL ads, middle finger is newest white supremacist dog whistle, says so code for white race being number one. That's pretty much what happened with the OK sign. 4chan said it kind of looked like a WP for white power, and the ADL won't fit completely unironically. So now people can get canceled if they are not in the know, even if they are just playing the circle game, which it looks like this guy, this guy was doing. And that's my fault on that issue. When everything is a dog whistle, nothing is. Then we have... Why is the winner portrayed with his media headshot and the loser in an unflattering angry photo? I already know the answer from Tom Woods on Twitter. And that was him quote tweeting IPAC. Congres congr congratulations to pro Israel progressive leader Wesley Bell on your victory tour tonight against NG Israel squad member Rep. Corey Bush. Being pro Israel is a good policy and good politics. And yeah. And I said in response, APAC, the Nazi, American Israel uh, PAC. Uh, feels like something that comes out of anti-Semitic conspiracy theories like the protocols of the elders of Zion. You know, I personally don't believe in all those anti-Semitic conspiracy theories, but you know, when you have a pro, the pro-Israel lobby openly saying, we control who can, who can get elected or not, you know, that that's something like, you know, it feels like it comes out of those. And that's my thoughts on that issue. Then we have American Saucy, Tulsi Gabbard confirms Quiet Sky's Nightmare from Racket News. And I posted that and I said, the government is charged to put people on terrorist watch lists for the simple crime of dissent. Scary stuff. 
You know, I, I don't agree with Tulsi Gabbard on any, any everything. But with that being said, it's scary. It's how you can just if if, if you dissent enough, they'll put you on an, a watch list like they did her when she when they put like it was like four S I think they called it. And I don't think that's very libertarian. You know, I think people should have the right to free speech without being put on a watch list. But sadly, I don't think the U.S. government thinks that. And that's my fault on that issue. Then we have denied passport for being named after trademark character from NDTV.com by Frosty Slawman. That's the crossword from the Not the Onion subreddit. And that was how a young girl in the UK had her passport request denied for her name conflicting with the official UK government trademark of Khaleesi. Never was able to get the situation resolved by using social media. Our governments, when we need them, should at least not be so beholden to profit under Stephen Conflict putting these words down. And I would agree with that, you know, I'm very, I would say personally against intellectual property for reasons like this. I think people should be able to make money off of their ideas, but you know, they just can't own those ideas forever. And that's for increasingly what intellectual property is. They can, they can even say, oh, you can't come in here because you, you were named after a trademark character. And that's my thoughts on that issue. Then we have... Chuck Schumer's plan to create a constitutional crisis from Lemon Lion Light, and they said, from a Washington Post Dominion piece, Chuck Schumer's plan to create a constitutional crisis. I'm just added. Senate Majority Leader Charles D. Schumer, D. New York, released legislation that shows Democrats are being quite seriously and ruthlessly about how to violate the Supreme Court's role as a meaningful actor in constitutional order. Schumer's No Kings Act focuses on presidential immunity, but offers a roadmap for turning the judiciary into plaything of legislature on any matter of constitutional controversy. The legislation claims to overturn the Supreme Court's decision in Trump for the United States and then some by declaring that a court overseeing the criminal prosecution of a president may not consider whether the charge conduct was within the president's co conclusive or preclusive constitutional authority. So the Justice Department would have an explicit go-ahead to bring indictments for presidential actions as ordering military strikes overseas or reallocating funds for executive order so long as prosecutors can find a criminal law broad enough to plausibly apply. Charged ex-presidents could not even raise their constitutional prerogatives as a defense. This would be unconstitutional and absurd, but it isn't even the most radical of Schumer's legislation. The bill also would strip the Supreme Court before it decide whether it complies with the Constitution. The Supreme Court of the United States shall have no appellate jurisdiction to declare any provisions of this Act, including this section on constitutional order or restrain the reinforcement of application of any provisions of this Act, including this section on the ground of its unconstitutionality. Instead, the U.S. Court of Appeals for the District of Columbia Circuit, presumably chosen because there's a greater share of judges appointed by the Democratic presidents in the Supreme Court, would have the final say, and even that court could not rule against legislation against clear and convincing evidence that it's unconstitutional. In other words, a favorite appellate court would bring the Supreme Court for the purpose of this bill with direction from the Democrats to not look too closely at the constitutional particulars. She was writing a breathtaking power grab. This isn't an effort to regulate the court's jurisdiction for either reasons of efficiency or some limited policy aim. It's a direct attack on the ability to referee critical conflicts between the executive and legislative branches. If Congress can do all this, it can in effect destroy the judicial power the Constitution created. Congressional majorities could pass any number of laws infringing on due process, free speech, or other constitutional rights and prevent those targeted from seeking meaningful relief in court, the whole constitutional plan of dividing power, which presumes a judiciary is an independent check on the other two branches, would be fundamentally sabotaged. The fact that such radical legislation can be by a sense majority leader ought to be put to bed. The notion that Democrats are the party of norms, institutions, and of the constitutional order as they existed for at least a century. And I would agree with that, you know. I, I believe we have checks and balances. You know, they, they might the frame says, oh, it's just we're using checks and balances, but that's not the truth. They want to use it as a means to control what the, the Supreme Court, since, since they don't have the majority there on, like, the Congress currently. And that's my thoughts on that issue, you know, that they, they need, that's why they need, that's why they care about the Supreme Court so much, because they, they don't control it, you know. It may sound all good, like, oh, we just want... To people to hold it accountable, but no, they want control, and this is just, this is just uh, this is just an excuse for for that, and that's my thoughts on that issue. Then we have JD Vance's investments real potential contradictions for his political persona from TheGuardian.com at throwaway one four six two two five, and I said almost all politicians are phonies who care about nothing but power. Very few exceptions there. I think Thomas Massey's probably the biggest one. And then we have. Looks like right wingers are at it again for Ben Shapiro. That's a Ben tweet from Ben Shapiro. It's 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 the media is introducing a Trojan horse and says Harris Walls Joy and inside says socialism and then Elon Musk replies. But also there's a little horse inside the big horse hiding communism. And I said in response, being a libertarian is when you realize that both parties are the Trojan horse. And that's why he was a problem on that issue. You know, it's the society will get increasingly more socialistic regardless of which party wins. And that's my thoughts there. Then we have. Trump says he has agreed to do offer from ABC News to debate Harris from abcnews.go.com by Donald Key, and I said he'd be a fool not to regardless of how biased it is against him. Harris is horrible at public speaking, and that's my thoughts on that issue. And then finally we have Through the Roof, My Journey into the Surreal and Furious Future of Homeowners Insurance from Business Insider by 406 and yeah, that looks interesting. 
Um, yeah, insurance is definitely interesting right now. And I definitely do think, you know, uh, yeah, I definitely do think, um, you know, if AI do, if, if people do want to use AI for means of insurance, I think they should be able to. With that being said, you know, we just can't have AI taking all the jobs, and that's my thoughts there. And then, see, I think we have, we have, that was it. So I think we're going to wrap it up there, and I'll see you guys in the next episode. Um, bye.